On your screen is the most celebrated Jamaican poet, the Right Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley, popularly known to us as Miss Lou. She was celebrated by Google in selected regions yesterday on the Google Doodle app. So basically, Google Doodle celebrated her on her 103rd birthday. Google Doodle, for those who don't know, is a tool that is used by the company's homepage that highlights world issues, historic events and celebrations all around the world. And they chose our Jamaican poet, Miss Lou, for their celebration yesterday. Trust me, it was really a historic event and I just hope that the authorities looking on see that the world celebrates Miss Lou and honor her by giving her the status of national hero. Yeah, man. On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right. Y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a go on. A blessed and wonderful Thursday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, as you can see on your screen, we'll be traversing through the streets of West Kingston. We are going to pay particular attention to what really are going over there in the general Jonestown top jungle area because a series of knockings and clappings going over the last night following the last life of a man who was dubbed the leader for the gang over Texas. Here, yeah, man, may I tell you, the man them deal with the place bilious alone, knockings and clappings. Furthermore, let me give you a small preview of what actually went on underground last night. Listen. So that series of knockings and clappings last night is the result of the loss of life of a man that took place over by Paradise Court that's right across from Texas yesterday evening approximately 5 p.m. So it is reported that the deceased man on your screen right now has been identified as Timothy Shedden. It is reported that Shedden was sitting in front of the community when men on motorbikes rode up and opened fire hitting him all over his body. Shedden was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced of course, you know what. But let me give you the full rundown of who is Timothy Shedden. Now, Timothy Shedden is also the son of an Arnett Gardens football player that goes by the name as Shedden in the streets. Everybody know him on the football field as Shedden. Now, it is said that Timothy, are commonly known in the community as Timmy, was coming from work. But the irony of this is, you know, Timmy is a corner boy too. But persons are saying that he was off that life, but he's not off that life anymore. And he got himself gainfully employed and tried to step away from his criminal past. But other persons are saying that, boy, them know said this would have happened sooner or later because of his criminal past and also because of who he used to associate himself with. So you see, when time you take up a certain lifestyle, my peeps, and to all the would-be gangsters out there, the upcoming one them where I look upon them money as elders and want to be like them, you know, have to understand how this game I work. You see, if you really want to step away from a criminal lifestyle, you cannot remain in the same environment. Because a man nah go feel please for no say you knock it and clap it off for him couple of weeks, couple of months or a couple of years ago. And you walk past him every day like say everything was okay. Especially if somebody for that person fell casualty to the war. No, it nah go work. 
So if you want to step away from that criminal lifestyle, you need to leave that environment totally. Leave out of the community. Leave out of the circle. Detach and disassociate yourself from everything within that criminal history or criminal lifestyle that you want to leave behind. You cannot decide so you're going to step out of it, go get yourself gainfully employed and I'll walk past the very same man them where you used to knock it and clap it pan. But even though we get for understand say is a friends turn enemies type of situation and the man we on the spot news media get for understand we carry out the act along with his cronies you know, is a man that is known by members of Jan Public, known by members of the security forces. So I'm wondering why this brother had just continue to knock it and clap it, take people's life left, right and centre and continue to just walk up and down like a regular member of Jan Public, like all is well. Nobody cares, nobody's business. Everybody just knows he him that and him a do it and nothing wrong. I saw the thing gone to. Boy, may I tell you, well, if Uno are right with that still, you know, Uno are right with living in that type of condition there, well, who am I to say otherwise? Because this brother has been in and out of police custody, has always been on the police radar, but yet still, him still out there a walk up and down like a regular member of John Public. Now, police now look for him, nobody who see him dirty acts now go say nothing. Boy, I mean, I don't know what else to do. But, boy, it just rough pound. No? That's all me can say. Yeah, man. So watch your snow, my peeps, over there in Olympic Gardens. I went and we hear the word gardens. We always, I think, about something beautiful, you know, botanical gardens with flowers and all these nice things. Well, as twins are twins, would I say in one of them clips, you know, Olympic Garden, Rang Garden. Yeah, man, may I tell you. So over there in the St. Andrews South Police Division, what house Olympic Gardens to be exact? We are talking about the Prime Minister of Jamaica's constituency. Yeah, man, a portion of school had to force close their doors because of gang violence that has led to the loss of life of six persons. We are talking about four people get clap whip on Tuesday and two Sunday. Yeah, man, may I tell us that the man, they might deal with the thing a certain type of way. So when on the spot news media contacted residents in the area, the residents were basically upset with all of the knockings and clappings who are going that has also so interrupted what should have been a smooth first week of school in these communities. So some of the schools that close their doors because of the gang violence is as follows. We are talking about the Balcom Drive Primary and Junior High School. We are talking about Tower Hill Missionary Basic School. We are talking about St. Patrick's Primary School, Penwood High School, among other schools in that area. So the Prime Minister also visited the area yesterday and this is what he has to say. Listen. I'm here in the communities of Road and Crescent, McKinley Crescent, uh, Balcom Drive, 440 Drive. Uh, these are communities that have been affected in the last three days by gruesome murders. Uh, six persons were killed in what is uh, considered to be uh, a gang-related uh, incident. It would appear that uh, young men from the community involved in gang activities uh, ended up in conflict and it has resulted in the loss of six lives. Uh, we also believe that in addition to the gang conflict that there may be uh, retaliation where innocent persons are involved. Uh, the police have assured me that they are investigating and that they will leave no stones unturned. So far, residents are fearful. They have expressed their fears. Uh, and so I'm here to reassure them that we will have full coverage of the area, uh, both in terms of uh, static and dynamic uh, police presence, but also in terms of intelligence gathering. Uh, we cannot allow such heinous crimes to be committed and uh, the perpetrators face no consequences. Uh, this is my constituency. I love the people here. Uh, they are like my family. Uh, and wherever crime happens here or wherever in Jamaica, I literally take it very personally. Uh, and so we're going to be ensuring 
that this murder, this apparent gang conflict, that the necessary resources are brought to bear and that the perpetrators are brought to justice. The immediate concern of the residents, uh, they want to be reassured that they are able to go about their peaceful and lawful business without fear of being caught up in any random gang shootings. So the Commissioner of Police is here, uh, SSB Ricketts in charge of the area is here, uh, and uh, we are reassuring the residents, we're giving them the assurance that we will put in place all the necessary uh, security provisions to ensure their safety. Uh, there are some other measures which we will put in place as well, including cameras. Uh, we have a project in place, unfortunately, it is stuck in procurement and uh, has not yet come to fruition. But I'm going to try and fast track that uh, because, as you can see, uh, these areas are properly laid out with proper roads and infrastructure. Uh, and so cameras would be very useful. Uh, the mode of the commission of the crime was by a drive-by. A drive so motor vehicles were used. The cameras would have therefore been very useful in identifying the vehicles and possibly license plates and possibly those who actually committed the, the crime. Uh, the residents, I must say, whilst they are um, very much afraid, uh, they are not in support of what is happening. The community is against this. And uh, I am expecting that we should be able to get valuable and useful information to bring the perpetrators to, to justice. So I would like to ask this question to those persons who are probably more law savvy than on the spot news media is. Is it written in law that the prime minister or his ministers or the commissioner of police or the head of defense force should make it be known to members of Jan public their intentions as it relates to fighting crime and violence? or whatever tools they are planning on using or to implement into fighting crime and violence that they have to make it be known to the regular members of Chan Public. I really want to know why them always have to do that. Because the Prime Minister basically just spilled the beans. So they might go put up some whole heap of camera in the place. The general public never have to know that. More than you just send some money in one JPS truck for climb the light way of them and you just put the cameras in as some inconspicuous we use a little small one them where they're not really to notice or put it inside one of the breaker box them or something just deal with it in an inconspicuous way I mean I understand why them always have to tell John public every little thing that them are going to do is coming like yeah warn the gunman them say yo we are going to do this we are going to do that so no need for deal with the thing a different type of way give us some more work for do or make it even harder for us to do I basically that them boy me I tell them I don't know but anyway, my peeps, make we move on. So over there in the parish of Manchester, Manchester has been making rounds on social media for the past couple of days. And it is really sad when places like Poros, Manchester, make the news. Because Poros is a really nice little spot, you know, that overlooks a plain to the south and also with hills behind it to the north which also offers the Rio Mino River that runs parallel to the main road that helps to keep the atmosphere of Poros really cool. So Poros is definitely one of Jamaica's significant landmarks. But sadly, you know my peeps, in recent times, the old dirty kind of boy, them, the criminal elements continue to plague these rural communities and introduce to them a certain type of dirty lifestyle with the people they're not used to. Now on your screen is some criminal elements that is about to rob the Z1 supermarket in Poros, Manchester. Now on your screen is one of the criminal elements standing in front of the car. Now the other one that is masked up, you can see him walking up the stairs entering into the supermarket. Now on your screen is the criminal element that has the hoodie on his head with a cigarette in his hand robbing the owner 
of that business establishment. You can now see where she is packing the cash in a box and the criminal element has his gun in his hand. Now behind the criminal element where I could not really show that person because I probably would have been flagged by YouTube for that because the computer may have picked up that person as a person lying there lifeless. But that person behind him is a female that they placed to lay face down on the ground and to close her eyes whilst they continue the robbery at that supermarket. Some peeps, any member of John Public that can recognize these faces, please give the information to the poorest police or any police station that you feel comfortable to call or call Crime Stop 311 or Police Emergency Number 119. Let us help to rid our communities of these criminal elements that continues to wreak havoc right across Jamaica. Yeah, man. So, anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to Wonder Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscasts. On the spot, news media. Yeah, man.